Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the newly rebranded Always Radiant Skin podcast. We are discussing the importance of reducing toxins for true radiance, energy, and focus. Happy, happy and healthy hair, skin, and nail slowing aging. It is absolutely an inside job. It's not going to happen by accident. And getting to the root cause of things by being as detoxed and pure as possible will get you the hair, skin, and nails of your dreams. In today's episode, we have a lovely friend joining us here today. We have Dr. Wendy Trubo, MD, MBA, IFM certified practitioner. She's passionate about helping women optimize their health and lives as a functional medicine gynecologist. Through her struggles with mold and metal toxicity, celiac disease, and other health issues, Dr. Trubo has developed a deep sense of compassion and expertise for what her patients are facing. She is the co-author of Dirty Girl, Ditch the Toxins, Look Great, and Feel Freaking Amazing, love that title, and has been regularly featured in Mind Body Green and Huffington Post. She's an accomplished speaker and previously had her own television show. She's on the faculty at A4M and a speaker at their conferences along with other national societies. She and her partner will be releasing their next book in 2024. Happy early congratulations on that. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show, Dr. Wendy Trubo, MD. How are you today? Rachel, it's great to be here. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm of great. course. Yes, we had a chance to connect earlier this year on your podcast mm-hmm. and we had a lot of time, ta- a lot of fun talking about detoxing and reducing our toxic exposure for slowly aging, happy hair, healthy hair, skin, and nails. So, since our conversation, I would love to hear from you, Dr. Wendy Trubo, the unlimited dollar question that I ask everybody when they come on the show. What is radiance to you? Rachel, okay, first off, call me Wendy. You know, we're just chatting. So I would say for me, radiance is that ability to be joyous every day. And that that transmits through the body and gives the body a different experience. And that changes at a cellular level how we are. So the experience of joy is radiance to me. You hit the nail on the head of a very deep topic with radiance is living a joy-filled life. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that you see that as well. Because when we're joyful on the inside, it permeates outwards, right? If we're happy, if we're in negative emotional states, we're going to be frowning. We're going to talk about negative things. When we're in a more joyful state, you're going to be in that more positive emotional state, which is absolutely uh, what I like to see more of. Yeah. Speaking of what we are seeing, what are you seeing in your practice in regards to skin concerns and toxic exposure? Yes. I mean, this is huge, Rachel. So the... The, so there's so many layers of toxins. I know we've dived into this before, but let's review. So you can put toxins in your body with food, water, alcohol, the phthalates, the plastics, the single-use plastic water bottles, the food storage containers, microwaving our food. So you can get toxins in your body that way. These can <clears throat> excuse me, disrupt the microbiome. They can disrupt our skin. They can disrupt our hair. They can disrupt our entire lives if our guts are off. And then we can put toxins, <clears throat> excuse me, on our body, typically as women through our beauty products and our hair products and the lotions and our dry cleaning and all of these things. Our skin is the largest organ. And so it can, it can make you thrive or dive, basically. So 
all of those things are ways that we put toxins on our skin. And then there's the other category, everything around us, our air quality, our water quality, the vegan leather that we sit on. Vegan leather is plastic. Great that no cows were harmed, but vegan leather's plastic. So we're getting off gassing from that. Uh, all the ways in which we interact with plastics, you know, we're sitting here on the podcast, this has plastic on the microphone, the keyboard is plastic, the mouse is plastic. We're getting EMFs from the lights that we're using and the air around us. So there's, there's three different ways that we get massive toxins exposure every day. And the body has a number of pathways to go down. So in my practice, what I'm seeing is a lot of psoriasis and eczema, acne, dry skin, weird patches, right? Like some of it's, some of it's oily and some of it's super dry and cracked and scaly. So alterations throughout the body in how skin is occurring for women, because I only see women. And when you start to peel off the toxic exposures, their skin gets better. It's, it's profound. Yes. And to add another layer to that, it's when those of you tuning in, when you're on this health journey and slowing aging and optimization, body, mind, spirit, energy, the skin can tell us when something is off. Yes. And the skin can tell us that through, you know, eczema, psoriasis, acne, dry skin, hyperpigmentation, hypopigmentation, mm -hmm. hair loss, energy, all that. And so there were a couple of things that you mentioned that uh, actually I haven't talked about on the show before, but it makes complete sense. Dry cleaning. So, <laughs> you know, so I'm looking at your beautiful fuchsia dress that you have on. It's one of my favorite colors. That color looks fantastic on you, by the way. Thank you. With your, with your um, hair and skin tone color. So when it comes to cleaning, yes, with our laundry detergents at home, dishwasher detergents, soaps, phthalate-free, sulfate-free, 100% fragrance free. Yes. Well, what do we do about dry cleaning? Okay, so dry cleaning is made the what they use as the product in dry cleaning is formaldehyde. That's what they use to preserve you when you're dead. So you don't want to put this on your body. So honestly, Rachel, I stopped taking my clothes to the dry cleaner and I took a chance a couple years ago. I thought to myself, Okay, this is another layer, right? So I'm wearing clothes that aren't 100% cotton because it's almost impossible to be fashionable the way I want to be fashionable and wear 100% cotton organic clothing, which would be the goal. But when I'm on camera, that doesn't work that way. So uh, this is a black halo Jackie O dress. And when I started this process, I thought to myself, okay, I'm, I'm not going to dry clean these. I'm going to throw them in the wash and wash them on delicate, wash them on cold, wash them with the phthalate, uh, paraben, scent-free detergents and see how it goes. And I didn't start with my expensive dress. I started with, actually, I had this dress from med school. I bought it in 1996, which is crazy. I bought it almost 30 years ago and I've been wearing it. It's one of my favorite dresses, but the dry cleaning didn't get the sweat stains out. And I thought to myself, well, the dress is ruined. So I'm either gonna wash it wash that sucker or I'm going to throw it out. And so I thought, well, I got nothing to lose because the dress is done for me anyway. And I washed it and it came out better and looked better and I felt healthier. So I don't dry clean my clothes. So there are some things you absolutely cannot wash, uh, like some acetate and silk type things. And I just don't buy them. I buy, I buy other things that, that ultimately you can throw in the wash. It's, it's a whole, the whole thing is, um, I think it's like a racket, right? It makes you feel like you're buying more expensive clothes if they have to be dry cleaned, but really they can be washed. Test oh, it out. That. Yeah, I love that. I wear actually quite a bit of cotton mm -hmm. and cotton lace, which hides wrinkles really well. Mm -hmm. And I also wear a ton of silk mm -hmm. and silk can, you know, look a little bit less wrinkly than others. And what I like to do is actually use a really good steamer. Oh, that's a great idea. So doing your own steaming at home is going to save you tons on dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. And it's just hot water. It's hot water steam. It's going to get some stains out. It's also going to get all those wrinkles out too. So that would be a good little tip. Yeah. I wasn't planning on talking about that. However, you know, I didn't know that about dry cleaning and yeah. them using formaldehyde. Like you just blew my mind. And then we've also heard about uh, with other clothing like yoga pants, which are 
full of plastics and phthalates. So, you know, and obviously. PFAS. There, there was just a big thing that Lululemon specifically adds PFAS to the crotch of the yoga pants. So would you believe I don't own a single Lululemon piece of clothing? I don't know because either. Only it's not really I wasn't making a statement ever. It's more just that I'm I'm not a great shopper. So I'm like, oh, this looks good, I'll buy it. But I'm not at Lululemon because I just don't go to stores. So anyway, I didn't know this. And I just learned that they have PFAS in the crotch of the yoga pants. So this is horrifying because your vaginal tissue is highly vascularized. That means it absorbs it, it absorbs what it's what it's exposed to. So if you're putting a very toxic chemical right at your vagina, the the chance that you absorb it is quite high. So uh, don't buy that, right? Like don't buy that and don't put it right next to your vaginal tissue. It's not healthy for you. Love so, that. Yes. Yeah. I wear only cotton panties, mm -hmm. beautiful lacy cotton panties, none of those like frumpy stuff. And then I pretty well always wear EMF shorts that actually have silver threads. So silver is innately um, antibacterial, antimicrobial, and it also blocks EMFs. So if I am wearing yoga pants, I'll actually wear those shorts underneath holes. That's a great so if, idea. if you do have yoga pants, you can do that. And then you're also getting the EMF protection as mm -hmm. well. That's a fantastic idea. We're just dolling out all sorts of great tips here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what would you say some of the most common types and sources of environmental toxins are nowadays? Oh, this is such an overwhelming question for the listeners because it's everywhere. So, so when we go back to the in, on, and around idea of how do you get exposed to toxins, the food you're eating can have toxins in it, herbicides, pesticides, insecticides. Glyphosate is the most commonly used herbicide in the world. Its use doubles about every seven years, and it's implicated with altering the microbiome, not only of your microbiome, but the microbiome of the soil. And that has trickle down effects because it's directly toxic to bees. And then it's indirectly toxic to birds because it kills the bugs that the birds eat. So it's when you think about we're here and we don't, we're stewards on the earth. We're not, we don't own the earth, we're stewards. And when we harm the microbiome of the earth, that ultimately comes back to bite us and harm us because it doesn't provide the same level of production and productivity. And, and so what we take from the earth, it doesn't give back to us. And so it glyphosate is extremely harmful. So you get it exposed to glyphosate, even if you're eating organic, bear, uh, organic legumes, a lot of them, they're grown in the ground, they're contaminated with glyphosate due to runoff or drift. So it's almost impossible to get organic legumes, particularly chickpeas without glyphosate in it. And then if you're drinking from single-use plastic water bottles, you're getting the BPA from those single-use plastic water bottles, which then never degrade. And another way that we're tanking the earth. So that's the in. And then as women, we, by the time we, I used to say leave the house for work, but now by the time we sit down to do our work, whether we're working outside the home or working in the home, we've been exposed to anywhere from 150 to 250 chemicals. So our beauty products are tremendous sources of phthalates and artificial colors. If you're using beauty products from another country, those aren't regulated. You have no idea what you're putting on your body and it could have contaminants, heavy metals, artif artificial everything. And so those are intrinsically inflammatory for the body. So we don't want that. And then the if you live near, I'm so sorry, Rachel, you said this to me and I didn't say anything. And now I'm going to say in the podcast, if you live I near- I know exactly what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say? I'm like, I know what you're going to say. I'm sorry in advance. So if you live near a, a plant, a, an industrial plant of some type, a highway, a golf course, uh, a farm, you these places all sp either spray or have tremendous- output of chemicals that get into the air and get around us. So the farms and the golf courses spray glyphosate because in a golf course, nature, nature loves diversity and golf courses value monoculture, which is that beautiful same green grass that is the whole, the whole golf course, but that's not natural. And, and if nature were left to itself, it would be extremely diverse with lots of different grasses and weeds and clovers and so in order to keep it like that, it has to be heavily sprayed. And so we're getting exposed to toxins from the way we live. 
And then anytime you buy a car, you're getting exposed to about 300 chemicals. And all of these alter the skin because the skin, you know, the body has, it can go down the autoimmune pathway. It can go down the weight gain pathway. It can go down the degenerative disease pathway. The that includes Parkinson's and then it can go down and MS, it can go down the dementia pathway and it can go down the something's wrong with my skin, hair and nails pathway. <laughs> That's a huge pathway it can go down. And so as we get exposed to these and it challenges the system and creates intrinsic inflammation and challenge, you will, if that's your pathway, you're gonna start to show up with alterations in your skin. And especially if you're doing everything right, right? Like you eat well, you eat with your cycle, your cycles are well managed and you still have acne. You you have a microbiome issue, which often tracks back to a, t a toxins issue. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said. So I did some testing last year when I left a previous home and relationship and all of that. And when I was at my girlfriend's, when we did our interview on your show in February, I was in that, my girlfriend's sauna twice a day. My body yeah. just knew detox, detox, yep. detox. And then I get my toxin reports back and sure enough, pesticides, no phthalates though. So Good. it goes to show you that the skincare that I offer on my e-store, there's no phthalates in it as well. I pre vet that. That's what you can expect on my skincare store. No paraben, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances. If they are fragrances, it's some essential oils. Mm -hmm. I was really happy to see no phthalates. Yes based on all the products that I sell and promote and work with and use myself. So I was thrilled about that. It, not only skincare, but also makeup and hair care too. Yep. The pesticides, yes, did show up. A previous partner wasn't as diligent as I am with buying organic. Um, yes, there was a golf course across the street. I am happy to say for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, is Rachel okay living on a golf course? I've actually been watching them um, for the last three weeks. I'm kind of a little couple like a couple blocks away from the actual course itself and more on a river. Yeah. And I haven't seen them spray and I've been That's watching, great. I've been seeing them do, you know, the mowing the lawn and I haven't seen a single thing get sprayed here. It's great. So I'm really happy to see that because I know that's not often the case, and especially in Florida here. I do drive an older car. I'm pretty insistent on that. I don't want the Bluetooth and all right. of that in the new cars, all the EMFs. Like, don't even get me started on electrical cars right. and hybrid cars with the EMFs. And yes, I absolutely agree with you that a lot of times these toxins play out in central nervous system dysregulation. And that's what I noticed with three different types of mold exposure from a previous home. Mm -hmm. My nervous system you know, was just ramped up. I was sensitive to any type of sound, smell, vibration. It was really hard to be calm. And I actually had attributed that, that to also being in two car crashes. So mm -hmm. have that getting head rocked and then being exposed to different toxins. And, you know, I do so much good work to reduce the toxins. So just, just so you know, like I study this stuff and it still impacted me. Right. So it's just a matter of doing the best we can and, be ongoing testing to make sure that we are staying on top of things. Yeah, the skin is a late thing for sure. It really is. But you bring up a really good point, Rachel, that there's two parts to this. So one part is you do your best to minimize your exposure. And, and that's through cleaning up your beauty products and cleaning up the food you're eating and cleaning up your air quality, all of those things. And you and then you work on targeting the removal, testing and targeting the removal so that you can empty the body of this. But you live on this earth. So for example, my oldest is going to college in the fall and we did the numbers and it's actually cheaper if we invest in a property for her to live in than for her to live on campus for four years. It's less money to, to buy a property. Interesting. Right. Good for you for doing the math. So we did the math and then my oldest is all inspired and they go and they find a place and we go, we make an offer on the place pending mold and, and air quality inspection. And we go for the inspection. I take two steps into the home and I said, there's mold in this home. And then I'm like warring with myself because I'm super sensitive to mold. And I've spent the last four flipping years getting rid of my mold i'm down from five strains to two so it's really a great like it's i'm moving in the right direction and i'm like oh i'm getting mold exposure but i have to pee i have to pee i've driven two hours to see this house and i don't want to walk into it but i'm like i gotta pee so i go and i pee and then i'm like you know what i can't be here any longer 
and I leave and we rescind the offer. And so this highlights that you can do everything right and you still get a stupid exposure by something you're doing, trying to go do a good job. And then you just get back on the, okay, I'm gonna detox. So it's, you're never quote unquote done. Not like, oh, I've gotten rid of it. Now, it, I've gotten rid of my mercury fillings. There's no lead pipes in my home. I don't have exposures to, to heavy metals. So at some point I might be done, right? Assuming that I don't continue to get, you know, I don't think they're testing the mercury levels of the food in California and the wildfires in California, when they burn, they release mercury that they're sequestering from the forest and they're heavy. Metal is heavy, so it lands on the ground and in the water. So I'm very curious about whether studies will be done to look at the food, but who knows, maybe we're getting a, a mercury exposure that way, but assuming we're not, maybe I'll be done with metals at some point. But the other things are really an ongoing process of minimizing exposure, maximizing detox, and that's all it is. And it's, it's a constant, it sounds like a rat wheel, but it's really about a practice of ensuring that what comes in goes out so that we maximize the skin minimize our our brain fog maximize energy maximize function yeah it's um people can get really paranoid about this stuff mm -hmm. and say if you say for example my presentation at the biohacking conference this is the road less traveled right so right. sometimes you'll have friends that you know they drink the tap water they don't mm -hmm. know they don't care right they don't have an yeah. awareness they're oblivious you know blissfulness ignorance and then, you know, you go over to their house, you don't want to drink the water. So you start bringing your own water and stuff like that, or your own water to restaurants. You know, you can kind of go off the deep end with this stuff. Yeah. But at the end of the day, filter your tap water, filter your shower. If you can do whole home reverse osmosis, that's great. You know, I installed a $40 shower filter. Hair feels great. Skin feels great. Mm -hmm. Sleeping better after even just two days of having it installed, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. Filter your air. Most homes have mold. And let's be honest, most people can't move. Right. Um, they don't have the ability to move. And then they get their testing. It's like, oh, shoot, there's mold in the house. Just filter the heck out of your home, right? Yep. Air purifiers and everything. I'm in Florida. Like, that is like one of the biggest health issues of being in the South is the right. humidity and the mold. However, the biggest thing is, yeah, heavy metals through air, believe it or not, right? And then it goes into the water supply that's in my paper. The smoking of our generation, though, what I think is actually the biggest toxin is the unseen thing, which is electromagnetics. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of um, toxin panels don't actually look at electromagnetic radiation. You actually can only see this under live blood cell analysis under the microscope and actually look at the quality of the red blood cell, how round it is, you know, if it's sticking together to other red blood cells, if you have clotting factors. I truly see this as the smoking of regeneration just yeah. because we're getting it left, right, and center. So what do we do with that? Turn your router off at night. Stop using Bluetooth. You know, don't buy that electric car or hybrid. Stick for an older combustion motor, right, mm -hmm. so that your EMFs in your car is low. Don't use Bluetooth. Wear EMF protective clothing. Right. Don't wear, you know, those monitoring gadgets for your health. That's right on your heart meridian, like the Apple Watch. It's just blasting you with Bluetooth all day long. What do you see? Uh, what do you do in your life and with your family to reduce your exposure to this invisible exposure that's only yeah. now being spoken about in, you know, the public space before you'd get totally heavily censored talking about EMFs, and now everybody's talking about it. Right. So. So I am a huge fan of, so it's interesting because I'm a huge fan of pick the battles you can pick and don't sweat anything else because the stress about what you can't fix is almost worse than what you can't fix. So don't go crazy over the stuff you can't fix. So in our house, we turn off the Wi-Fi at night. We had a little bit of a breakdown when we did it at first because our oldest was applying to college and was in the midst of college applications and the Wi-Fi went down and they went nuts. <laughs> they were like, you have to turn that back on. I was like, okay, maybe we extend it a little bit later because we go to bed at 10. So for us, like 10, 10, 30, whatever, but probably 11, 30, 11, 45 for the teenagers so that they don't, so that they, but it is a good way to get them to go to sleep. So we turn off the Wi-Fi, uh, put the phones on airplane mode. My husband can't do that because he's on call. And so the call routes to his cell. 
So it's interesting. So it, you have to pick the battles, right? So we, um, I remember we lived in a home where I didn't sleep and we lived about like 800 feet from these towers. And theoretically, the towers weren't putting out that level of EMFs because it, it's a logarithmic decrease every foot that you get away, except I felt it. I'm one of those sensitive humans. I felt it. And so what we did, we put, we, we got like um, copper, I think it was copper paint that blocked the EMFs and made a huge difference in sleep. And then I know now you can get grounding plugs, check the energy, see if it's dirty and get grounding plugs so that you quiet down the energy that's being emitted through your plug, even through the plugs for some people who are that sensitive. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So being, you know, in the past electromagnetically hypersensitive, because I had all these other toxins in right. my research, you're going to be more electromagnetically hypersensitive, the more full your toxic bucket is more technically mm. termed oxidative stress status. We know that. So imagine how many people now are more sensitive to EMFs and they just don't notice it. They're like, why is my attention span so short? Why am I not sleeping? Why are my hormones off? Why am I have all this waking? I'm really happy to say that if I were to try and make a cell phone call from where I live now, the reception here is so bad. Mm -hmm. You couldn't even hear me. And the EMFs are so low in this home. I'm beyond thrilled like I couldn't mm -hmm. be more happy so it's like picking those battles so they don't use pesticides in the back here EMS are super low sure there's probably mold the water quality here smells like sulfur so air purifiers water purifiers you just do the yeah. best you can and then ongoing detoxing yes. with sauna use I don't know foot baths um, taking binders and things like that so I know that that's where your specialty is mm -hmm. I'm yeah I I would love, I know we're going to wrap up in just a few moments here, but you do many things. You've written the Dirty Girl book. You have another book coming. You have you know, brick and mortar practice, online practice, your mother. You know, we're in the same health entrepreneur space. How do you have the energy to do so many things, look as fabulous as you look, slow aging, and be in this beautiful, positive, emotional state that I see you're in? You know, you're a very beautiful, radiant woman, and I had the pleasure of meeting you. And uh, just what, what's your secret? Well, first off, thank you. And I have a lot of help, right? I am not an island. Uh, and I, I have a lot of people who help me and do things. So I have, we have a brick and mortar and in that brick and mortar, we have an operations person. I work with my spouse and he takes care of a lot of the bricks and mortar day-to-day -day things. And then in the dirty girl detox land, where we really are working with people who are interested in detox throughout the country, that I have a company that helps me execute that. And then in the house, I have a babysitter who lives with us, who has taken over. She's like my wife, right? She's taken over a lot of the things that we, that as women were tortured by, like I was so awful at cleaning and cleaning up after dinner and doing the laundry and putting the laundry away. Like I was terrible at it. And I just decided that maybe I'll do the things that I'm good at and I'm going to work more. I'd rather work more and pay someone to do the things I'm not that good at. So I'm pretty clear what I'm not good at and I give it away because I just don't feel the need to get good at everything. So I focus on doing the things that bring me joy, that I'm good at, taking care of people, transforming their health, and then a lot of the other stuff I'm paying someone else to do, if that makes any sense. So oh, I yeah. am, makes I'm not an island. I have help. Yeah. Yeah. Having your community is fantastic. Find what you like to do. Like some people, I love to cook mm -hmm. and I love to know things are clean to my liking. I am a Virgo. So, I mean, I get a lot of joy out of that. So, yeah. but I mean, you know, there are other things that sure I'll ask with help with. Absolutely. So I love that you have clear boundaries about what brings you joy, what doesn't bring you joy and how to ask for support. So that's fantastic. Yeah. So speaking of the beautiful work that you do, how can people work with you? Oh, thank you for asking that. I love working with people. We have a, we have a bricks and mortar for people who are able to get to the Northeast. We're in Massachusetts. 
And that's for people who really need a deep dive on functional medicine. That's fivejourneys.com. And then for everyone else, because maybe you're not in Massachusetts, we have a online brand called Dirty Girl Detox, where we have testing, we have programs, we have community, we have supplements, we have the ability to work in consultation. And that's uh, dirtygirldetox.com. And that's our online Dirty Girl brand. Fantastic. Love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us all here on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast, Wendy. I look forward to having you back on because if you want great skin, it's not just about putting skincare on it's uh, and getting rejuvenation. It's about being as pure as possible. And this is the huge missing link that medical aesthetics, plastic surgery, and dermatology offices are missing, which is why I wrote my last paper to get these aesthetic clinics on board with oxidative stress status and what more functional practitioners like yourself are doing, right? You, part of A4M. I love A4M. Like most forward thinking people are there. So I love what you're doing. Um, and also share your podcast and uh, the episode that I was a part of on your show too. Where can people listen to your podcast? Yes, we we renamed it. We rebranded like you did. It used to be called the Five Journeys Podcast. Now it's called the Feel Freaking Amazing Podcast, Live Like You Matter. And you can find that on all the major platforms for podcasts. And, and Rachel, I have to say thank you for the work you're doing in terms of vitality and glow, right? Like human, human glow. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. The more radiant, high vibe, conscious humans there are that are more beautiful themselves and they're focusing on more beauty around them, they're going to be living by example and showing other people, hey, yeah. this is a great way to live a beautiful, joy-filled radiant life. This is my little way and contribution to help make this world a better place is by teaching these things. How can we embody radiance? How can we be radiant? How can we be in our balanced masculine and feminine states so that we have better interactions with ourselves and others? And other people are going to say, wow, what are you doing? I want to know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And that those that I teach then get to teach others, yes. right? So yes. that's what the whole school of radiance is truly about as well is those in leadership position, parent positions, also those who are maybe wanting to meet new partners, how to be radiant. So it's detoxing, it's presentation, grooming, um, etiquette, because at the end of the day, the why behind being beautiful and radiant and looking after ourselves is to be more confident so that we can build our community. And it does take a community to support us. Yes. You know, we're not on an island. This isn't a one-man show. This no. is community. And that's what gives me joy at the end of the day is to see other, other beautiful souls like yourself, Wendy, who are helping others live their best lives and living your best life in the process. So thank you for the work that you do as well. Right back at you. All right. Love you all so much. Thank you, everyone, for spending time with Wendy and I on the Always Radiant Skin podcast. Be sure to check out the description and the show notes of this episode for ways to connect with us and working with us and, and all of that. Have a high vibe, beautiful, radiant day, and I will see you again all again right here on the Always Radiant Skin Podcast.